Hi there. A oh, great to see you here today. I'm really excited that you're joining me today on this great web chat. Well, we'll see if it's going to be great or not. But sponsored by Dymo Indicia, we're going to talk about social media commerce. Make it easy for your customers to do business with you. I mean, you want to make it easy. You want to have some business. I'm Marsha Collier. I'm author of the eBay for Dummies series and several books on social media. This one, coming out December 11th, Social Media Commerce for Dummies, is going to go into what we're going to talk about today in far more depth. Because there's a lot to know, but the learning curve isn't as hard as the execution, and that's what we're going to talk about. I want to thank everyone for participating in the 2012 Dymo Indicia Thinking Forward live chat series. This is the fifth of six live discussions that are being hosted either by me or my fellow e-commerce advisor, John Lawson. You know, cold or ice. If you missed the other chats, you can watch those videos in full right here on thinkingforward.tumblr.com. So today, we're going to talk about social media commerce. But before we get started, I want to remind everyone that this is an interactive discussion. You can ask questions and leave comments throughout the chat. Um, I'm looking in the social stream right now, so I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, below the screen, um, you'll see a social stream where you can submit questions, share comments, and we're going to try and make this interactive. So log in with your Facebook, Twitter, Google, or Ustream account in order to do this. So everybody, please take a moment to sign in, and, and then we're going to go on. Well, I hope you've signed in. So let's talk about social media commerce. What is the difference between social media commerce and, let's say, regular e-commerce? We've had e-commerce going for a whole long time. And e-commerce is selling online. You don't have to be an online business to sell online. Lots of brick and mortar businesses are doing it. Uh, you really don't have to have a whole lot of extra things. It just takes a little practice and you'll be able to reach your customer where they're hanging out, which is where the social comes in. People are using Facebook and social media in, in record numbers. Um, they're there in their spare time. They're, they're looking everywhere, right? YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. Think about the platform that's best where your customer will be, you know, hanging out. In one of our previous web chats, I, I talked to you a little bit on how to look for your customer online. That's an important thing because if you're reaching out where your customer isn't, then they're not getting your message and the time you're spending on social media could be a waste of time. So since money is time and time is money, you want to go on social media and portray your business. But you've got to portray your business as a person. Uh, things have changed. You know, the small business has a great chance to compete with big brands online. And, and that's thanks to social media. Um, let me show you this slide. Um, Customer service. Customer service is also perceived as you're reaching out to your customer. So if your customer's on Facebook and you reach out to them, and I'm not talking about running, oh, look what I listed online for sale today. That's not social. Social is interactive. It's talking to people. It's listening to their defeats, their happiness. Be a person. The best thing a small business can do is portray themselves as human. And that's the key part of your customer service. When we talk about customer service, I want to show you a slide here. I think it's really important. Online retail. Look how important customer service is in this category. This slide is from Stella Service, by the way. Um, people will spend more money with you as a business 
online retail if you provide good customer service. And customer service is the key to becoming a top-rated seller on eBay. Think about that. Think about your reach to your customer. But when you're thinking about your reach to your customer, what I want you to also think about is who they trust. Do they trust the big CEOs? Um, I don't know. I've been listening and looking at a lot of blogs where when the CEO of a company makes a statement, it's often perceived as, you know, the corporate line. Well, let's face it. That's one of the reasons over the years eBay for Dummies has been so well accepted by everybody who reads it because I am an outside voice. I don't work for the company. Um, an interesting thing was put out by David Armano, a good friend of mine. I want you to take a look at this slide. These are the changes of trust. From 2011 to 2012, this is kind of interesting. The biggest decline in the Edelman Barometer trust history was people don't care what the CEO says. They care about what a person says. Now take a look. A person like yourself is up 22% in recognition. That's what people are caring about. It's what you have to say, not just the business company line. The company line is out there that goes out for big business in press releases, but you as a business owner can reach out to customers. Now that slide I showed you was online retail. And again, in other broadcasts, we've talked about if you're a lawyer, you can have Amazon affiliate. Um, I know one lawyer that I feature in my book who has a brilliant plan and he gets click through from lots of different sources. Click through, something we should really discuss, it's covered in the book. But these are links that may or may not be competitive to your business. But the thing about being social is giving your customer information, content, Content is what your customer wants. Aside from the fact they want you to be you, they want your business to be the face of a person, they want to read good content. They want to be interested in what you have to say. So, provide good content. If you want to check your trust level in social media, if you've been online for a while, I might recommend go to tweetlevel.edelman.com. I'm being pretty transparent here. Here is my current tweet level. An interesting thing, you'll notice there's a trust score. Mine is at 72.3. 77% of people say they don't want to do business with people they don't trust. Now, <clears throat> this is really important, and we're talking here about social media. When you're on eBay, let's say, or an online site, you'll have the feedback. And hopefully, if you're not on eBay, your feedback is open and ready for everybody to look at. Because people do click through to your feedback. When I'm purchasing something online, and believe me, I'm a big customer. You know, people joke I never, never leave my office, but that's kind of true a little bit. I mean, I test out all kinds of e-commerce stores. And honestly, if I see the feedback isn't that great, I'm not going to shop with them. It's just not something I'm going to want to do. So work on your trust scores. Build your trust by interacting with people. Now, when you're on your website, there are a few things. Wait, do you have a website? I certainly hope so. Because any business today, whether you're brick and mortar, whether you're a bakery, whether you are a lawyer, a doctor, a dentist, you need a website. Because what your website accomplishes is it gives you a platform for your customers to visit. Um, if you have people working at your business who might answer email, it might be interesting for you to just go there and put a page, which I'll talk about in a moment, about the people who work for you. 
this is really important. We'll talk about web more about your current website in a moment. Let me see what we've got. One of the things that's really important is to have an opportunity for your customer to be able to reach you. Now, I realize you don't want to run your business 24-7, but a simple addition of, let's say, Google Voice. Set up a Google Voice account. You go to Google Voice, and you're going to be able to get a phone number. This is a phone number you can use in your ads, online, in your email, your business cards, wherever you want to have it. You get one number. And with this one number from Google Voice, you can either point it to your cell phone, your office line, your home line. In other words, when a call comes into that number, it will ring on those different phones or, and, you can get a text message, which is going to let you know that somebody has called. Google, it's kind of interesting, they have a transcription. So if somebody calls my Google Voice number, um, what they do is I get a transcription. I get to see exactly what they're, well, kind of. The transcription isn't that great yet, but it's pretty good. You get a good drift, and you can just click to hear it either on a mobile device or on your computer. This is kind of an important because when you have a customer that's totally freaking out, or if it's a customer that's interested in buying one of your bigger items, they want to know now. They don't want to know tomorrow because I can guarantee you 99 and 44 one hundredths percent of everything you're selling, there's going to be somebody else on the web that's trying to sell the same thing. And if they answer the customer's questions better than you, they're going to get the sale. So on your website, I want you to be sure to have an FAQ page, and that's Frequently Asked Questions. They can be about your product, about how you ship your items. Something that people always tend to leave out is where they ship from, because that alerts people to let them know if they're going to be paying sales tax. We're not going to get into the sales tax issue now, but you know that's a very big deal. Um, where I live, it's 9.75% or 925 In essence, when I'm shopping online, I can save 10% basically, by shopping with a small business across the border. I'm in California, we've got Arizona, Nevada, lots of good sellers that can get something to me just as quickly as somebody shipping in California. Uh, so consider putting all the information, where you ship from, how you ship, USPS like the brilliant option ever. If you take a look at my blog at mcollier.blogspot.com, I talk a, a lot about different things and different ways to connect with your customer, but I do talk about shipping. And I use Dymo Indicia's Dazzle software. The reason I use Dazzle, rather than using an online vendor-based uh, label printing service, is because it keeps it on my computer. Whether I'm selling from Amazon or eBay, from my online store, my Facebook store, all of my information remains in my Dazzle software. So I will be able to access that at any time from any computer because the information is kept in my account on the Indicia servers. And when you ship something, always be sure to send that tracking number. The delivery confirmation as supplied by the USPS, we used to call it delivery confirmation, pretty much it was good for that, kind of mostly sometimes, but now it's turned into a real tracking device. You can see where your packages are. I got an email from somebody I sold to in Austin, Texas, and he said, I checked the tracking number you sent me. Um, why did my package go to Hawaii? Well, I guess it was a mistake by the USPS, but indeed, his package going from Los Angeles to Austin, Texas made a stop in Hawaii. But by looking at these tracking numbers, the customer will know where their package is. Another thing you can do to help your customer service online is to put in a small widget. Take a look at this widget. This is from snapengage.com. 
Just a small widget. See where it says click help? You'll find this on my blog and you'll find it on my new website. I will be redoing cool eBay tools by the end of the year. And you're going to be able to find a little tab where somebody can click. When they click this, it does one of three things. It can either send me an email if I'm not online. If I am online, we can open a live chat and I can talk to the customer. Um, but the email comes to me right away and I will get it on my phone and I can respond to the customer. So think about between Google Voice and something like Snap Engage, you're there for your customer. Your customer knows they can contact you and if you don't respond, the sale's not going to happen. People are in an on-demand world right now, and that's what you need to do. You need to be on-demand for your customer. Honestly, for a $6 order, I just might not be there at 11 p.m. at night, but I pretty much guarantee you if somebody's buying $300 worth from my website, if I'm there and I see that call come in, I'm going to be able to answer. Now, when you build your website, the few things I want to recommend that you do that, that are kind of important. Uh, this is from the Zappos.com website. This is called a site map. I picked this up from the bottom of their page. And it's kind of cool. Take a look at under about. Don't ever click here. <laughs> and it's kind of fuzzed out. When you click there, that goes to their blog. <laughs> but also notice about. About is very important. About tells the customers about you and your business. Okay, about. Who are you? Have a page that tells about your business. Here's the about page from Zappos.com. First of all, customer service isn't just a department, it's their passion. Is it yours? Because if it isn't, Think about how Zappos started. This was a shoe business. You know, they're selling shoes on the internet. Um, it's kind of an iffy deal. I mean, how many times have you gone into a shoe store and found things that were not the way you wanted them? They offer free shipping back and forth. Now, granted, they're not the cheapest on the web, but they get the sales. Go back to my first slide about the value of customer service in online retail. You can afford to charge a little more if you're going to take returns, if you're going to be there for your customer. And returns are easy. You can, through your Dazzle software, you can send your customer a return label. Um, it can be made into a PDF file and emailed. Think about that. Make it easy for your customer to do returns too. That will build your business because when you have a happy customer, they're going to be happy that they could return something and will buy from you again. A little more about the About page. I love the fact that Zappos includes furry customers. Now this doesn't have to be a picture of furry customers, although as we know, if you go to Facebook, people certainly love pictures of puppies and kittens, right? So these are pictures they feature of their customers' pets. Make a contest. Have somebody send in the pictures of their pets. I mean, why not? That's a way to engage your customer. It's engaging content. It's customer service in the fact that you care about them and their families. That's just another way to do it. Think about it. Let me get to a, a slide that is a little bit complex, but I want, want to, whoops, I want to show it to you. This, I think, tells me a really important story about the value of customer service. This is from my eBay store, okay? These are page views. What I want you to take a look at, look at the green line, which is 52 weeks prior. And look at the current days of the selected month. I have made major inroads on my eBay views by participating in customer service. 
by participating in social media. Let's call, call it what it is. People come to your site to see you when they know who you are. They'll go to the web and they will search for you. Which brings me to another slide. Take a look here. This is where people have come to my eBay store. These are refer types. Notice 88% are other websites. That's kind of important. That tells me that my social media outreach, I mean, this is as of this morning. You can tell by the date. That tells me that my social media outreach is definitely reaching somebody. Somebody out there cares enough to say, oh, does she have anything for sale? Let me find her. And again, those were eBay stats. If you are on eBay, those are available. They're under traffic marketing as long as you have an eBay store. And I highly recommend that you do that if you're going to be on eBay because there's so many benefits. Okay. Think about this. When you're on your website, when you get sign-ups for, let's say, a newsletter or, or deals of the day, you should be in contact with your customers in places other than Facebook. I grant you I don't do as good a job, and I will admit it, as a lot of people I know do. And I'm pretty proud when I see those emails from people who are doing a good job, when their emails aren't pure content. And when people sign up for emails on your site, why not ask for their birthday? Look at this email I got today. I'm getting something free for my birthday. What could it cost you? Here it's a lipstick. A lipstick isn't an important or expensive thing. And I may not, probably not, go get that lipstick. But the point is, Sephora made an impression on me. They kept track of my information. Whether it's really true or not, it makes me feel like Sephora cares about me. But think of your advantage as a small business. You're a regular guy. And if you let your customers know that you appreciate them, they'll shop with you. Now, when it comes to email, there are a few things you really should remember. One, make your email look good. That's that's the number one thing. You want to make your email look like people, like you care about people. Take a look at this too. How often do you buy products or services from email messages you've received? That's That's quite a large number. I mean, people are buying, well, fewer than once a month. That's not bad. They are buying from email. So what could it hurt? Send an email out to your customers. I'm personally not a fan of being barraged with email, with bargains and deals. But throw in a story. Throw in something I'll be interested in. You know what your customers like. If you're in a wedding business, if you're in a catering business, um, if you're in any kind of business, put in a tip of the day. Put in something that will catch your customer's eye. And talk about uh, catching your customer's eye. Think about your subject line. These are words, by the way, these graphs are from Dan Zarella of HubSpot, one of my favorite social scientists. These are the most clicked through nurturing subject line words. Are you shocked to see that free is the lowest. Secrets, e-sales, awesome, skills, e-book, helpful, shipping, look where shipping is. These are things that people will click on. They find it more interesting. So pay attention to what you're giving your customer when they first see the email because that subject line is so important. And also, if you can, merge your files and personalize your email. Make it say, hi, Marcia, hi, Steve, hi, Rebecca. <laughs> then it gives the impression to the customer 
that you actually know who they are and you want to connect with them personally. Email is so important. When you do your email, use a nice layout. Use it to sell. Make it look clean. Make it look like you want the impression of your store to be or your website. And when you have the hot links, those are the links that people click in email to go to your store or your website, make the landing page very similar in style. Don't have it click through to a random page that has like no relation whatsoever or a simple page. Say something email special. Put a little put a little burst on the page. Make people know they've landed on the right page. Keeping your themes from your website to your email, your eBay store, your online store, wherever, keep your themes similar. If you go to my blogs, I try to keep my themes similar. It's kind of important because it's building a business identity for you on the web. It's important. There's a lot going on right now about SMS marketing. And it can be very effective, but not every customer wants to be getting text messages from you. Um, I think I like it, and I do subscribe to text message marketing from some people. The minute they abuse that, I hit stop, and they have to take my name off. And I wouldn't recommend giving your cell phone number to any business again that you didn't trust. Remember the trust level in the beginning. If people trust you, they will give you their email address, their birth date, maybe your cell phone number. But remember, email and SMS marketing always needs to be opt-in. And that means you have to have the customer click something that says, I would like to receive information from you. And also, when you're signing up on a site or you're buying something from a site, if you don't want to hear from them again, be sure you double check as a consumer going through the process. Yeah, maybe you don't want to hear. So be sure it's opt-in and make it a double opt-in. In other words, when somebody opts in to get emails or text messages from you, send out a text message, send out an email to remind them they've agreed to it so that if they don't want to, they can say, sorry, I made a mistake. I don't want it. I have to show you this. This is an SMS marketing bit I got today. I don't know where these people got my, cell, got my phone number or I have no idea. They thought it was a mobile, but it bounced to my Google voice. I don't want to hear about this. I think it's plain abuse and I, I will be reporting them. I never asked for it. So keep in mind, opting in is very important. That's a bit of customer service. Let your customers know that you care to follow what they have to say or what they're interested in seeing. Oh, let me see, where are we? Do you blog? Do you have a blog? I When you go back to the uh, Zappos page, that sitemap that I showed you, there was a link to their blog. It's kind of nice to have a blog embedded in your website. It doesn't have to be part of your website. It can be a click-through to a free WordPress or a free Google blog. My blogs are hosted on Google. I love them. I think they're very effective. They're easy to use. You can pick up templates. Try that. Let somebody go to a blog to learn more about you. I love this blog because this one uh, really has some interesting tips. This is Allen's Retail Liquor Store in Oklahoma. you got to love it. They've got it going for the holidays. They know what's going on. They know what their customers want to look at. Notice also there's a picture of Allen's Retail. By the way, this is Becky McRae on Twitter. Uh, you'll see her and say hello to her. She's pretty smart, and she knows a whole bit about small business marketing. Allen's Retail Liquor Store is her business. This way, people can go to the blog. They can get little tips and tricks. And these can be just things that you have sent out in your emails, the emails that people want to get from you and have opted in. And if they haven't opted in, they can go to your blog. 
which you should post the posts on your Facebook, links to the posts on Facebook page, and to your followers on Twitter. It's important that you keep the lines of communication through social media open. I haven't talked as much about LinkedIn. Uh, I find LinkedIn very good for B2B, and that means business to business. If that's your target audience, LinkedIn may be something you need to look into a little more. We've talked about YouTube, and this is, of course, one of my favorites. This is from United Linen. Um, they did a series of videos on napkin folding. Think about it. You ever want to fold a napkin in a fancy way? And look how smart they are. When you look at their napkin folding video and you scroll to the bottom of it, this all shows up. Um, you just go to their phone number, the link for their Twitter, their website. They really haven't missed a thing there. It's a way to engage the customer. And, you know, over the holidays especially, I suspect a lot of people are going to be watching this in the archive format because people are at work and people are online shopping and they're doing the flash sales. So by having things on a blog, on YouTube, on Twitter, Twitter goes by pretty quickly. But be sure you're out there reaching to your customer. Talking about Twitter, there are a lot of people who every time they list an item for sale, they tweet it. If that's the only conversation you're going to have, nobody's going to be very interested in listening to you. You may be able to be followed by a bunch of robots, but the truth is, people aren't, real customers aren't going to be following you. So if you consider conversations, Twitter is all about the conversations, as is Facebook. On Twitter, what I recommend you do Look for links that your customers will like. Tweet them at the times of day they seem to be online. And you can check that. There are a couple of sites. Crowdbooster is an excellent one where you can go online and check when your people are online, when the people that follow you are online. Tweet your information there. And when people address you, answer them back. One of the bad habits people have been getting into on Twitter is giving shout-outs to this long string of names. Well, a shout-out is nice, but if you're trying to engage somebody who has a lot of followers, you need to talk to them, and hopefully they will talk back to you, because a long stream of names isn't going to accomplish anything except spew out a long stream of names. It's not engagement. It's not talking to somebody. Um, when you're online and you see people tweeting, be sure to have a search set up on Twitter about your brand, your company name, your name, and perhaps your industry. If people have questions that they may be addressing to your competitors, but your competitors aren't answering, you can jump in and say, I can help you with that. Okay, it's 140 characters. Maybe you won't say, I can help you with that. Um, but that's important. And when somebody mentions your brand on Twitter, don't just retweet what they've posted. Thank them. Thank them for being a customer. That's the way you handle customer service in social media. You don't just retweet what other people say. Retweeting is good, but be sure to do the thank you first. That way, the perception by the customer and your audience will be, that you're engaged. And remember on Twitter, if you at reply somebody, if you reply to somebody's uh, tweet to you, the only people who will see that are the people who follow both of you. When you make a public tweet, it doesn't have an at and a name in front of it. These are important things to, to, to remember. And keep private messages as direct messages. I wish I had a screenshot of it, but if you take a look at my DMs that I get on Twitter, and those are direct messages, that means that I've followed somebody and they have the privilege to private message me. Private messages are not for sales. Thanking someone for following you, fine. But don't immediately get give them a sales pitch 
One of the things that really annoys me is when I get an auto direct message from somebody that says, whoa, I met you here on Twitter. Meet me on Facebook. Why? You've never talked to me. I don't know who you are. Why would I follow you on Facebook? You have to engage the customer before they're going to follow you on Facebook and before they get to your Facebook page. Let's talk a little bit about Facebook and how important it is with your customer engagement. Uh, let's take a look here. There you go. Facebook is really effective for B, that's you, the business, to see the customer acquisition. Take a look at these, this chart, and this is from HubSpot. The percent of channel users who acquired a customer through the channel. Take a look at this. B to C is fabulous. LinkedIn, as I said earlier, um, if you're a profession, more B to B, and this chart really brings that out. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, and that company blog. Remember I told you about the company blog? You gotta love Allen's Retail for doing a good job on that. You know, have some blog that's going to engage the customer. Not only Allen's Retail. I mean, you can do it if you're a doctor. If you sell linens like uh, United Linen, Linen Rental, talk about linens. If you sell photography, give uh, photography items, give photography tips. Give things that people want to read, how they engage in you, and this is how you build the trust which goes to the back of our web chat, at the beginning of our web chat, where today's social media commerce is all about building trust. You know, they say in the old days it was word of mouth. Well, when you annoyed a customer, when you made a customer unhappy back in the old days, word of mouth, well, maybe they would talk to six people. But now people can go online and they can influence hundreds, perhaps thousands of people by any bad move that you do. And yeah, maybe it is. Maybe it is holding a brand hostage. But everything's transparent today. And if you treat a customer badly, expect that it will be posted. Know that people will go online. People will go to Facebook and start posting and they will share it with other people. Think about also review sites. You've got Yelp, Angie's List, TripAdvisor. There's any number, and I'm not, not going to go through all of them. Just search your business, uh, your industry, and review, and see which sites are carrying reviews. Search those sites and look for your business. You're going to be shocked. I was totally shocked. I found my business on Merchant Circle which was a previous B2B uh, social media site, which they're now trying to push as B2C. But be sure to claim your pages on these sites. Because if people go to these pages, they see you're not participating. You're not participating. That's it. You're not communicating. You're not part of the conversation. So be part of the conversation. Get on these sites and claim your page, for instance, on Yelp, Fill in all the information on your business. Let people know who you are, where you are, just like Allen's Retail did on the side of that page. I, I'll bet you that Becky McRae has claimed her page on her page on Yelp. Okay. Also, don't think of people as the competition. What I want you to do is like other businesses. Now, you can do this, yes, from your personal page, but to like other businesses from your business page allows you and the other businesses to interact. It allows you to tag them in your posts. It helps you share content. And by liking other businesses from your business persona on Facebook, I'll bet you they'll share more of your content. I know I've found it to be true. So consider doing that. And whether it's doing very well or not, consider putting up a Facebook page, a Facebook store. This is a store I put up from Fan Page Toolkit. 
it's free to anybody who wants to use it. Just go to Fan Page Toolkit. It's free for up to 10 items. If you have more than 10 items, uh, it will also import the items from your eBay store. Consider using that because whether people are buying on it like crazy or not, for 10 items, it doesn't cost you anything. Put it up. Give yourself a presence. The more places you have a presence, the more SEO opportunities you have. If you don't know about SEO on my blog, mcollier.blogspot.com, search the words SEO. I did an interesting post on that. And see what terms will work for your business. A quick thing is just think of the keywords, like when you're building an eBay title, of the different products you sell, things that people are interested in, things that you're going to cover in your website and your blog. These are all important things for you to do. Let me think. I don't see much in the social stream today. I guess everybody is shopping. So people did post some questions, and I'd like to answer those for the end of this. <sighs> How can social media improve my customers' experience with my business? Again, why not like your customers on social media? Why not use a customer relation, the CRM software, which basically keeps a record of your customers and where they hang out on social media? That's a very handy thing to have. Uh, sometimes they can be kind of expensive, but there are some inexpensive options I mention in my book. and. They can help you keep track of your customers. Be where your customers are, fish where your fish are. Is there any way, any good way to measure the ROI of my social media marketing? ROI, return on investment. This is a hot topic, especially with big businesses when they hire agencies. What am I going to get for my money? Sounds to me like you're just out there yapping about me. What is it doing for me? Well, think about your customer. And what you need to do is, does your cash register ring more often? I showed you that chart of people coming to my eBay store. The only thing I did different this year versus last, it's not that my uh, items have improved that much. Trust me, I'm busy writing books all the time. What it is is my social media outreach, which has built the business. There are a lot of ways you can check. Your website, for example, probably has stats that are available to you. Um, I'm with web.com and Network Solutions. You can go there. Check the stats on who's visiting your website. Uh, see where they're coming from. This is your return on investment, building your audience as well as ringing the cash register. Are customers usually more or less likely to buy my products directly from my website? Well, I guess if they could walk into your store, that would be great. If you could deliver it to them, it would be great. But think about your website as your hub. You may find you sell more items on eBay. You may sell more items on Amazon. But have those products on your website. Be sure they're available there because you won't be paying those extra fees. You've got the website anywhere, anyway, like your Facebook page, your Facebook store. Have them there. It's just additional options for your customers to buy. How many online storefronts do I need? <sighs> as much as you can handle. Uh, like I said, I like to have my stuff up for sale as many places as I can handle it. When I know I can't handle the business, I take the items down. Uh, they may not be on Amazon. They may not be on eBay. If I'm too busy to handle my business, then I take them down. But why not be put your brand name everywhere on the web that you possibly can? And remember, you're not just selling at people. You're engaging with people and you're making it social. Are there certain parts of the online shopping experience that consumers complain about more often than others? Yeah. Make it easy for them to check out. If you have an online store, make it simple. Take different forms of payment. Let's say they may not want to give you their credit card. 
So accept Google Wallet, accept PayPal. I've been taking PayPal and I, I see all these stories, oh my, PayPal's all bad and everything. But I gotta tell you, I've been doing business with PayPal and I have no stock in PayPal, believe me. And I've had my run-ins with PayPal. But on the whole, it's a great payment service that people trust. And I would not have a website without a PayPal checkout button. So not only that, but shipping options. If you have shipping options, give your customer more than one. If they don't want to pay for shipping, give them free standard shipping. Use Parcel Post. It could take up to 10 days, but for a heavy package, it's a whole lot cheaper. When you get to the smaller packages, Priority Mail and using the Priority Mail zoned packages is a real good deal. Offer your Priority Mail shipping at just a little above your free shipping. And always make an option for expedited shipping. I know that sounds ridiculous, but somebody actually last year clicked on a $400 order to be shipped overnight. And I had honestly never sold that item on an overnight shipping. And I did have to, you know, run it, run it through, see if the box fit and, and did the whole thing. But it was a $400 order that I wouldn't have gotten had I not had expedited overnight shipping. So free shipping, offer your customers options, make it easy for the checkout, and take different ways of payments. Very important tips. <sighs> Do any e-commerce sites have built-in features that can help me market your, my business? Uh, yes, but realize that their goal really is to promote themselves, not to promote you. Um, yes, there may be ways to do it from these online sites, but I suggest you take your online promotion into your own hands point to your sales. Don't, you know, a lot of these give the customers an option to shop with somebody else. So I recommend that maybe the built-in features are okay, but be darn sure that they're just selling your items and not someone else's. Um, oh, let me see. What are some common mistakes? And this is the last one I'll take. What are some common mistakes small and online business owners make that make things more difficult for customers? Well, let's go with before the sale happens. By not having a complete description of the item they're selling. I mean, really, there's no excuse for not having a complete description. Um, when you have an item you're selling, and I'll use the example from my book, there's a barcode, whoa, here, <laughs> okay? Read the number from the barcode and do a Google search on that barcode. You're going to get more product information on that product than you can imagine. And if you're selling something, get it from the manufacturer's website. Copy and paste it into your listing. They want you to sell your item. You want to sell your item. And by answering all of the customer's questions up front, you're going to make that sale. A couple of other small business mistakes. Again, not offering different ways to ship. That's a big mistake. Makes it very difficult for customers. Not having a professional looking website. If you're going to sell something, make your website professional. I don't mean it has to be expensive. Take a look at my two blogs. Uh, take a look at some of the other websites. Get the feeling for your customer and what your customer wants. Give them some, a place that they will feel comfortable shopping with. And, you know, it's interesting. I'm redoing a website and they asked me, did I want to put in a full-on web store? Well, honestly, I only sell on my website maybe about 10, 10 items. And I don't want an online web store. I want something very simple, something where I can change out the product as I want and make it easy for myself. I have a page that has thumbnails of my products. When you click on the item title, it goes to a product page. On the product page, you can use the free PayPal Buy Now button or the Shopping Cart button. It's not costing you a thing. This way, it integrates with PayPal. People can go pay directly with PayPal. 
and then they come back to your website. PayPal allows for all this. You do not need to be spending a monthly fee for an online store unless you have a huge number of items. So consider learning a little HTML. It's really not hard and on the PayPal site they show you how to do that. Other common mistakes? Uh, be sure to let the customer know that their item is shipped and that you're grateful for the item. In every package I ship out, I'm looking around to see if I see one of them. Let me see. Uh, let me see if I can reach it. I know it's pathetic, but I send with my eBay orders a little thank you for your eBay purchase. I'll sign it and I'll personalize it. Again, always thank your customer. Speaking of thanking your customer, I want to thank you. Thank you for coming today and watching this in the archives and I hope to see you again. If you want to learn more about the subject, social media commerce for dummies, and thank you Dymo Indisha. I can't tell you how I appreciate the opportunity to be able to get this message out. Thank you for sponsoring this. The sixth and final chat in this series will be hosted by John Colderice. Lawson on December 18th and he's going to provide some valuable insights for online startups based on lessons he's learned from starting and running his own e-commerce business. So if you or someone you know is hoping to get an online business off the ground in 2013, be sure to tune in the chat right here on thinkingforward.tumblr.com in two weeks. I want to thank you all for joining me today and since it is the holiday season, have a happy holiday, and don't forget, sales get even bigger in January. People are going to want to buy for themselves what nobody gave them as gifts. So happy holidays, and thank you so much for your support, and thank you, Daimo Indisha. Bye-bye.